Hey, what's going on? Um, the world's still kind of crazy, and I was doing some work in the in the bus here, and I got to thinking about my cell phone booster and all the different iterations I've been through with antennas and stuff on it and problems and successes. So I thought I'd talk about that for a little bit. So one of the things that I have had a hard time finding good information online about is the different antennas, uh, both into inside and outside, and the advantages uh, and disadvantages of each. And for us, it was actually picking the right inside antenna that really made all the difference for our booster. So let's take a look at them. So these are all the different antennas that we have used. So this is an omnidirectional exterior antenna. This is a Yagi, and hopefully I'm pronouncing that right, Yagi directional antenna. This is a panel interior antenna, and this is a whip interior antenna. Uh, so let's talk about this one here. This is the um, omnidirectional uh exterior one and what's nice about this is you don't have to aim it um, but it's not it doesn't pick up signal quite as well nor output signal quite as well and where we had trouble with it is sometimes uh, if you were in an area where it had good signal on one band and bad signal on another or a specific carrier yeah in situations like that we were actually finding that our booster would kind of get overloaded with the one signal that was too good. And this one wouldn't filter those out very well because we use T-Mobile and it does not have the best coverage, but um, sometimes, you know, AT&T was great and they were running on the same bands and uh, the radio just couldn't handle it. So um, <clears throat> the other thing to keep in mind with it, with this kind of antenna is it's, it's uh, electromagnetic, electromagnetic field looks like a donut and uh imagine this is the center of the donut hole and it expands out from there so it goes out in all directions in kind of a donut shape um now this is the yagi directional one and it obviously basically it emits electromagnetic energy this way and it also collects this way as well uh it's very nice for when you want to pinpoint in on where a tower is uh, and get the best signal for that specific carrier. Now I'm going to talk about this one last, that's the panel, and then this is the antenna that came with our booster. It's called a whip antenna, and it's basically like a mini version of this. You put it up like this and it creates a mini donut of coverage all the way around it. Uh, it could be, you know, six to ten feet in uh, circumference, but we were finding sometimes it would actually interfere with this one's, with uh, the omnidirectional, and even this one as well, uh, be just because it was just, it would kind of scatter uh, interference everywhere, and we were getting feedback in our uh, booster there. So I was having a lot, a lot of trouble, and so finally I was doing some reading online in some different forms, and some people were having a lot of success with this. It's called a panel type. And I am i believe it only goes one way. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. Oop. But I believe it basically radiates this way in 90 degrees. So imagine a, you know, a 90 degree triangle with its point there. It goes out this way and out that way, kind of in like a pyramid shape probably. Uh, so it's great to put on the ceiling or wherever, but it is super directional, but also wide where it, it casts it in a wide area from there. Whereas this is super directional, but also like a, I think it's like a, kind of like a cone. So if you know, you're out here, you're not getting much reception or signal. You're over here. You're getting crazy amounts, uh, where this is a little bit different. It's just this giant, um, area of reception that it creates. So We've, uh, I have it actually just put it there. I put it up in one of these cabinets. I'm hoping I might eventually kind of, I don't know, maybe mount it somewhere up in here. I don't know. 
We haven't done much permanent installation on any of our things yet because we're not quite sure uh, where we're going to put everything. Now, the other thing we should talk about is this pole. Uh, this is actually a flag pole here. And I'll show you how I mount it to the side of the RV here in a minute. But this has worked really well. It's 25 feet high. And, we, and then I can point it whichever way I need to go but it has allowed us to get it high enough to where we get pretty darn good reception with it. Even in areas where there is no signal, this literally will turn no signal into pretty darn good signal. So this is our booster. It is the Sure Call for Home. And you can see it has uh, different adjustment knobs for the different bands. Sometimes that's helpful. You can turn down a band if it's interfering or you're getting a little too much feedback, but uh, that's where the different antennas come into play. And what's real nice is it takes, it has a really wide range of power you can feed it. It's something like, uh, yeah, 5 to 15 volts DC it'll take. And it does the rest. But I really like this one. It's solid. It's me It's got a nice metal heat sink. Uh, in all reality, some of the problems we were having are possibly related to this being a home model, not an RV model. Uh, technically, you're not supposed to use anything over 65 dB of gain in a mobile application, I believe. I could be wrong, but this goes up to, looks like 72, uh, 71 sometimes. But it's worked out pretty well for us, and we don't really use it in motion anyway. We only use it when we're parked. So, uh, let's put this up, and actually it even improves my signal here. So let's put this up and let's see what kind of results we get. So I have it mounted in here. Uh, these are just little uh, kind of snap-in brackets I made for it and it works pretty well. And there it is all the way up there, way up there. Now it does flex a little bit, but it gets the job done. And that's really the key is to have height. All right, so we are switching to the uh, GoPro here because I have to use my phone. That's normally what I record on. Uh, so anyway, um, I'm going to use the Google speed test because uh, actually open signal appears to not show the cell phone towers anymore, which is kind of weird. But uh, so let's, uh, you can see I've got two bars inside the bus outside my house, and we're just gonna run the speed test and see what we find here, just right where I'm sitting. It's not bad. Upload's not so hot, and that's pretty typical because that's where the phone has to be communicating out more or the tower has a lot more power to it I'm assuming so let's turn on the booster and see what happens next uh, okay so the booster is on let's put that right there so I have the panel antenna me antenna right kind of next to me here and it's actually pretty close to the booster and I have a theory of what might happen but you can see my bars are full now, and my upload or my download looks like it is actually lower. Oh, it's creeping up. But my upload is actually better. Look at that. But. I'm actually not all that far away from the antenna, the out, outside antenna, so there is a little bit of interference. But still, uh, we had an improvement on the upload, which is, in my opinion, is more important than the download. I mean, as long as you got something passable download, but upload is really what makes the internet feel fast, especially for uploading videos or photos or whatever. So, uh, we are going to try something else now. I'm going to, we're going to move the panel. We're going to move this panel away 
from the booster and antenna a little bit. We're going to move it right here. And you're going to come with me. Let's just see what happens if we just move it right here. Look at that. A little bit of movement. And now we're at 19, 18. I think that's a little bit better than what we had before. And upload actually got worse. Not quite sure why that is. It's almost like I'm not using the booster at all there. Let's uh, let's move one more time. Now I'm back in the bunk area, and I got the panel antenna right there, the inside one. So we're pretty close. Let's see what happens here. And now that one's not so great again. Huh. Oh, it's creeping up. But look at that upload. Almost fully symmetrical there. Um, I do know that the longer this booster is on, the more it kind of, it tunes itself. Uh, I have moved the the antenna outside moved a little bit too, so I might not be getting perfect aim on it. Let's just run this one more time just to see. Ooh, that's horrible. What if we move like this? Nope. I don't understand that. <laughs> 20 megabits up. That's insane. All right, that's not good. Let's try it one more time. Oh, 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 getting better, getting better. See, it's trying to, the booster is trying to figure out how much power it can output it inside and outside and all that stuff to not get attenuation. Well, my uh, GoPro that I was shooting on, the battery died and, you know, we weren't really making uh, great content there for a while anyway. So, um, you know, I think some key takeaways here are uh, your booster is generally going to improve your upload more than your download. Um, and it's really important to keep the outside antenna as far as away as possible from the inside antenna. And you got really got to fine tune it. I didn't spend a lot of time uh, with it. Um, I think if I really dialed it in, I'd probably be able to have a more reliable signal. But it was working just fine. Just, you know, it was kind of a little flaky. But um, anyway, I hope you learned something. Um, feel free to share comments down below on your experience with uh, uh, your boosters or anything you found to work good or bad, your experiences. And uh, my friend Dustin, who is a much better videographer than I am, says I should ask you to subscribe. So if you haven't subscribed, um, don't subscribe for me. Subscribe for Dustin. <laughs> He might be watching. <laughs>